Welcome to Leveraging Inspiration, the inspired patent podcast, where we help you understand and leverage your intellectual property. I'm your host, Wayne Carroll, and I'm excited to bring you insights and stories from the success and failures of others and teach you how to win at the game of intellectual property. I always start with a disclaimer. This podcast is for educational and informational purposes only. I am not providing legal advice and nothing in this podcast should be construed as creating an attorney-client relationship. This week, we're talking about the internal company processes for intellectual property. And in this episode, we're talking about when in the life cycle of patenting to start selling your new product. This is a question that I I get all the time um, from inventors uh, and small companies saying, well, should I wait until the the patent is granted to file a patent or to, to launch the invention? Um, should I launch it right away? Uh, that definitely de- depends on your goals. And so we're going to talk about some of the pluses and minuses of, of launching a product as soon as possible versus waiting until you get a patent so that you can understand the optimal timing for selling your new product and make informed decisions. So first of all, I get the question of what is patent pending? What does that mean and how does it protect you? When you have when you have filed a patent application, the day you file it, it's patent pending. And you can put that on products that you sell that it is patent pending, and patent pending lasts until the patent is either granted or the application is abandoned. Um, The normal time frame for a patent to be granted is usually around two and a half years, and and that varies quite a bit. And then abandoned, that means you haven't responded to a requirement from the patent office, either a rejection that needs a response, or you've intentionally said, we're not going forward with this application. And what happens sometimes is you file another application that continues that first application for various reasons. So you're still patent pending in that case, even though the first patent would be abandoned. So as long as you have one patent application pending that has not been abandoned, even if it's been rejected, Uh, You have time to respond to that rejection. If that time lapses and it becomes abandoned, you're not patent pending. Or if you reach the end of the cycle and it gets granted and you don't file another application that continues that to try to seek broader rights or different rights to the invention, those are ways to keep it patent pending. Um, And how patent pending protects you. Uh, We've talked about in previous episodes how... First to file is the system now, and and it's really either first to file or first to publish. Once you file your patent application, any publications that are after that date can't be used against you because your filing date establishes this is when, as I filed this, I believe this is a new invention. It hasn't been published before. Uh, This is a new idea, new technology. So that means anyone who files a patent application after you could be rejected based on your patent application as long as it gets uh, published at some point. So it protects you as getting first in line because first in line is very important in in patent rights. Um, If you wait a few years and then file it, um, during those few years, someone else could publish something Whether or not it's a patent that's published, it's they publish it on the internet or in a journal, or they could file a patent application before you, and then you've missed your chance, even though you may have invented it first. Um, So that's the protection the patent pending provides you. Now, I often talk about strategy with, with my clients, and we talk about, you know, what is your cash position? Uh, what what is your runway? Are you able to wait those two and a half years, or if even if we can accelerate it, it's it's usually at least a year or around a year to get a patent application uh, granted. If you can wait that long, 
then there may be some advantages for waiting. But if you believe you have a viable product that is ready for the market, um, as soon as you file your patent application, go ahead and start selling. Um, get out there. You learn a lot from the market as you sell. I often tell clients that uh, if you um, if you go ask the market to actually give you money for your product, you'll that's the best feedback you can get is are people willing to buy this? And if they aren't and you can figure out why they aren't and maybe correct that, that correction might lead to a change you need to file in the patent that you've improved something at, or we need to adjust where we are claiming where the legal rights are going to be in the patent. Um, so there's a lot of advantages to going forward and selling it as soon as possible, especially for small companies or for startups. In some cases, startups will, um, especially if it's software, um, they may decide they have the funds to actually offer it for free for a time so that they can get that feedback, so they can get the, the information of, do people like this? Will they at least download it or start using it on the internet? Um, and find value with it and keep using it. So those are um, that. That's one of the reasons, especially for startups and small businesses, to release it as soon as you have a good viable product, and not wait for the patent process to finish, but definitely wait until you have a patent filed for the for your most secure rights, especially since it's a first to file system. Um, there is a, a strategy. Sometimes uh, clients decide to file what's called a provisional patent application. We, we, we have reviewed that before in, in prior podcasts. And one of the strategies behind that is if you expect as you release the product or as you do market research or continue um, to get feedback that you may, you, you have a high expectation, you're going to get feedback that causes us to adjust, add information to the patent application. Um, the provisional application expires at 12 months from filing without ever becoming a patent. At that point, or before that, that one year, you need to file a non-provisional application. It's a different application and you can only put new ideas into a patent application when you file a new application. So if you have a high uh, expectation that you're going to be putting new ideas, that you're going to probably want to modify some things, then the provisional application gives you that time to figure those things out. Then we put them in when we file the next stage, the, the non-provisional that gets examined. Um, and there, there are some risks in provisional patent applications. The biggest one is that you may be, um, because it has a lower standard for filing, the provisional patent application may not be drafted as well. I've seen very low quality provisional applications filed by um, either low quality providers or inventors themselves that didn't end up helping them and in some cases could actually um, hurt the, the process either in the short term or the long term. Um, I have talked to a lot of inventors who have decided they want to, well, their, their strategy is to work with larger companies to license it, um, to do a joint venture. And when they're talking to those companies, they often get the feedback and say, well, we're interested in, in going forward th with this, but we don't want to take a license and invest our resources into preparing this unless you actually have a granted patent. In those cases, what I recommend is if you can determine that's, that's your strategy and that's your plan, file for a accelerated examination patent application. Um, we can get through the patent office much faster. Instead of the two and a half years, we can get through in a year or around a year 
in a lot of cases. Um, and so this is a, a balance of risks. I often talk about balancing risks with clients. Of If you're in business, you're taking risks. You want to minimize your risks and maximize your return. If you need cash flow, then sell a figure out as soon as you can um, get cash flow from sales. And uh, it's essential to to have a patent attorney on your team who understands your strategy and doesn't just say, well, I always recommend this or I always recommend that. Um, some of the things you can do, of course, is to subscribe to this podcast, Leveraging Inspiration, listen live on IBGR Network on Fridays at 3 p.m. Some of the other things that are really helpful, as I mentioned, um, when you file a patent application, you can do a market analysis. You might be able to do a market analysis um, confidentially. Um, some market analysis you will do revealing enough information about the, the invention to get the market's reaction to it. Um, and a lot of times I, I have clients that will file an application and then go do the market analysis to determine, will it make sense to keep investing in this? Um, and of course, working with a patent attorney and, uh, as you go through the process of launching an invention, I recommend that you monitor your competitors. If you know who they are, um, we can run simple searches, or I can even show you how on Google Patents to look for any patents published by your competitors to see what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and also look at their products, you know, have a way to, to monitor them on a regular basis. And of course, make this strategic. Um, work with a patent attorney that understands who's going to listen to your business goals, your business plans, and help you achieve your goals and use intellectual property as a tool to achieve those. I'm Wayne Carroll, and this is Leveraging Inspiration.